Okay, so in part two of this video, we're talking about how to find the surface area and volume of a hexagonal prism, and we've set up that our hexagons for our bases will be regular hexagons, meaning they are equilateral and equiangular. So we have our surface area and volume formulas for prisms written at the top of the page. Surface area is 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the solid. And the volume is the area of the base times the height. So in this case, in number 1, we are going to be finding the surface area and volume of this hexagonal prism. And in this case, I'm going to start by drawing the base separate from the rest of the prism. Use a little stencil here. And draw my pen. All right, so let's draw myself a hexagon over here. You want to pay close attention when it comes to drawing your base separately to ensure that you place the value that you're given in the correct location. So in this case, the value given goes from the center to a vertex, which we call the radius, as was mentioned in the first half of this set of videos, and that length is 4. I'm going to go ahead and draw another radius in here from the center to a vertex. And we've said before that the regular hexagon is composed of six equilateral triangles, one of which we see here. So if this triangle is equilateral, then that's also four. And all three of these segments would be the same length, which means this entire length here is four. So if I can find the area of this triangle and then multiply it by 6, I'll have the area of the hexagon itself. As far as the perimeter is concerned, since we know the side length is 4, the perimeter will be 6 times 4, or 24 units. And that's our p-value that we need. So now let's work toward finding the area of this triangle, and then in turn, find the area of the base. All right, area of a triangle, 1 half base times height. So I'm going to draw the height in. Remember that height is called the apothem, which divides this bottom segment, the side of the polygon, into segments that are each two units long. And our 30, 60, 90 relationship tells me that if I take this short side 2 times the square root of 3, then that is the length of the longer leg, in this case the length of that apothem or height. So the area of the triangle, the area of the triangle is one half times the base, and remember we're doing the equilateral triangle, so the base is the whole four, times the height two square root three. Okay, so half of four is two, times two is four, so the area of the triangle is four square root three. Remember this is multiplication, so you can go ahead and multiply these values together. All right, now for the area of the base. If the area of the triangle is 4 square root 3, the area of the base will be composed of 6 of those triangles, so 6 times 4 square root 3, in which case we get 24 square root 3 for the area of the base. All right, so we have our capital B value, we have our capital P value. The only other value we need is the value of H. Remember, in a prism, the height of the prism is the distance between the bases. So here the distance between the two hexagons makes the 16 our value of h. Now we find the surface area and volume. Surface area 2 times b, 24 square root 3, plus p times h. Calculator time. 2 times 24 square root 3, close that parenthesis, plus 24 times 16. Surface area, 467.14, in this case, units squared, since there is no unit given. And that's the surface area. For the volume, the area of the base times the height, 24 square root 3, times the height, 16. Six hundred sixty-five. 0.11 units cubed. And that takes care of our first example. At this point, I would advise you to pause the video if you think you're capable of doing so, and attempt number two might be best to do that in pencil. 
And then when you have it done, come back and see how it compares to what we have for our solution in number two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop my page up here. All right, so I have another hexagonal base. Draw that base separate again, like I did before. As I've mentioned previously, I find that people that go ahead and separate the base from the rest of the prism or pyramid tend to kind of be able to organize their work a bit better. All right, so in this case, we go from the center to the midpoint of the side. We are given our apothem in this case, and it is six units long. All right, so we start like before. We want to draw in the equilateral triangle that we're given. Now, in this case, with this 30, 60, 90 triangle here, the 6 is the long leg. I need to know the length of this short leg so that we can determine the length of this side of the polygon. So, with that in mind, from the 30, 60, 90 relationships, the short leg times the square root of 3 equals the long leg. So, if we call this short leg x for a moment, then x, I'm going to write it down here, x times the square root of 3 must equal the long leg 6. Divide both sides by the square root of 3. Rationalize on the right side. And we end up with 6 square root of 3 over 3. Now, in this case, the whole numbers 6 and 3 are evenly divisible, so 3 into 6 twice. That square root of 3 is still part of that product. So x is 2 square root of 3, which means the whole side will be double that. So 2 square root of 3 plus 2 square roots of 3 makes this side 4 square root 3 units long. All right, so with that in mind, the perimeter. The perimeter of the hexagon is 6 times the length of the side, 4 square root 3. In this case, 6 times 4 gives us 24 square root 3 for the perimeter of the base. Now let's deal with some areas. The area of the triangle, and we're talking about the equilateral triangle here. 1 half, the base of the equilateral triangle is 4 square root 3 times the height of that triangle, 6. Now, in this case, I don't want to multiply that square root 3 in with the other 3. In other words, I'm not going to type it into my calculator. In this case, I just want to take half of 4 times 6. We'll leave the square root 3 as part of our answer, though. So half of 4 is 2. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 times the square root of 3 is the area of the triangle. The area of the base is made up of 6 of those triangles. So 6 times 12 square root 3. 6 times 12 is 72 square root 3 for the area of the base. So we have our perimeter value here. We have our base value there, the area of the base. The only other thing we need is the height of the solid. So the distance between the regular hexagons is 13. All right, surface area. 2 times the area of the base. plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the solid, 13. Type it in your calculator, making sure that if your calculator opens a parenthesis anytime you use a square root, make sure you close that after the 3 each time. And in this case, we end up with a surface area of 789 and 82 hundredths units squared. Now let's look at the volume. Volume is the area of the base, 72 root 3, times the height of the solid, 13. Which gives us a volume of 1,621.2 units cubed. And that completes example number two.